uh, sir, she'll start the introduction, then we'll share the screen. Is it fine? Then? Oh, yes. Perfect. I'll, I'll, I'll introduce you first, then I'll introduce Sinodent, and then I'll introduce you, and we'll start with the session. No I think we are live now. Oh, okay, yes. Sir. yes, yes, we are live. A warm welcome to all our participants and our viewers. I'm Dr. Anu Vashish, MDS in Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics, and I'm the membership director at Sinodent. With me, I have Prenka Varma. She's the executive head and our co-host tonight. I would like to thank CEO and founder of Sinodent, Dr. Anmol Bagaria, for organizing this amazing session. Sinodent is a unique platform, first time in India, a digital healthcare platform that provides and enhance a good relationship between patient and doctors. It enables real-time appointment scheduling system. Our goal is to create an easy access to healthcare services and communication or scheduling appointments for the dentist and the patients. Sinodent brings together at economic prices and minimum waiting time because everyone has 24 hours and everyone wants to utilize it. Sinodent is here to create a precious and healthy smile on patient face with minimum maximum welfare. I would want all the participants to mute themselves, please. So now this global pandemic has affected our dental practice, our treatment plan, our management, as well as our decision making and protocols. To solve all our problems and clear our dilemmas, we have with us Dr. Virendra Goyal, our speaker for tonight. Sir is the member faculty of dental surgery, Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons, Glasgow, UK, president of South Asian Association of Pediatric Dentistry, he is the professor and head of Department of Pediatric and Preventive Dentistry in Guru Nanak Dev Dental College and Research Institute, Punjab. He is the adjunct faculty of Dr. D.Y. Patel Dental College, Pune. He is the member of Education Committee in International Association of Pediatric Dentistry. He is the ex-professor and head of Department of Periodontics at the Smith Institute of Research and Dental Sciences. He is the ex-professor and head in the Department of Pediatric Dentistry as, at postgraduate program at Surendra Dental College and Research Institute. He is the fellow of Bangladesh Association of Dentist, uh, Dentistry International. So we are blessed to have you, sir, and we are excited for the today's session. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Anu, for this wonderful introduction, for making my evening so pleasant. Thank you so much. Uh, I must thank uh, uh, Anmol uh, for inviting me for this platform and uh, meeting all of you. It's really amazing. Uh, Anmol, no, uh, no. Uh, first of all, may I request all the attendees to mute? Uh, maybe Anu, if you have the option of muting all, is it possible? Can you mute all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just see if it is possible to mute all. Hello, ma'am. Okay. Okay, because since we are live and it doesn't look nice if there is a lot of disturbance, so I request all of you to please meet, keep your microphones mute. And uh, I'll try to finish my presentation within, within 45 minutes. And then I will take all the questions whichever you have. And I have already um, started uh, using Facebook on my iPhone also. So that simultaneously, if some questions are there, I'll answer. Maybe you can post your questions into the chat box also. Uh, because uh, I think the Google, uh, this Zoom has a limited... Uh, uh option for attendees like 100 or something can be added so all rest of you can join through facebook i think dr anmol has already shared the link with all of you uh on your whatsapp groups whatever the groups i have uh, i have seen because i saw today that uh, the new group which was formed is 14 uh, so i can imagine how many number of attendees you must be having in your previous webinars it's amazing anmol 
and uh, I was going through uh, your details on Facebook. What are your achievements? It was uh, very heartening to see like uh, what all you have achieved in your life at such a young age. It's very difficult to achieve such things at such young age. I must congratulate and congratulate you to your parents for wonderful achievements. God bless you, dear. So uh, now uh, let's talk you, about much, sir. Something, something about the COVID-19. Uh, all dentists, all students, UGs, postgraduates who have, have joined in this platform. I know you all know lots of things about COVID-19. Uh, because when this disease started uh, in the month of December, there were a lot of uh, confusions. Um, there were a lo lot many rumors. But since now, a lot many things has already been cleared by uh, our Ministry of Health, our Dental Council of India, uh, WHO, uh, ADA, and many other associations related to dentistry as well as medical health. But still, if you have certain doubts, we will definitely talk about this. So all, as you are all aware, this uh, Corona or COVID-19 started from China and slowly it uh, spread to all over the world, except for Antarctica. Antarctica is the only continent in the world which is still not affected with uh, COVID-19 disease. But the rest of everywhere, more or less, this COVID has reached. Uh, but the best thing which I find about the COVID-19 is, although uh, it is the same virus which has affect, affected our world before in Saudi Arabia, in Middle East, in China, uh, but uh, the mortality rate of COVID-19 is not as high as the previous COVID, uh, this coronavirus infections. That is the reason WHO gave a different name to this uh, infection that was COVID-19 to decrease the apprehension of the people because otherwise the mortality rate was 18 to 24 percent. But in this COVID, uh, this, uh, this coronavirus which is infected now, the mortality rate varies from 1.2 to 2.4 which is almost 10 percent of what was before. This is the latest uh, uh, data from the WHO website, which I have just taken today afternoon, rather evening. That is how many people are confirmed cases and how many deaths have already been reported. And these are the deaths which have been reported to WHO. The number may be much more, but this is uh, the number which has been reported to uh, WHO. And you can see uh, to the tune of 9.5 lakh deaths has already been reported and roughly 30 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 have reported and this is also the latest data which I have taken yesterday evening and according to you see that we are number two in the world now and uh, uh, otherwise uh, uh, we, uh, we were way behind all other countries but now uh, the cases are increasing. So particularly, I think we in India need to be more careful and especially the dentist, we need to be careful because we work in the vicinity of infection. That is important. And uh, there are different sources of transmission. The patients obviously who are symptomatic, they are a reason for transmission of infection. The patients who are infected but asymptomatic and the patients who are in intubation period, neither they're having any symptoms nor their test is coming positive, but they can spread infection. So that means whenever a pandemic is declared, we have to consider each and every person we meet in life as a suspected case of COVID. And accordingly, we have to uh, follow the instructions which are given by uh, different authorities. And this uh, COVID-19 uh, virus, this coronavirus doesn't spread through air, that is for sure. It doesn't spread through air, it spreads through the droplet, it spreads through the contact surfaces. So it's better, it's best to sanitize your all items very, very frequently. This is very, very important for all of us to know. Because if you look at the key car key, if I say, your mobile phones, if I say, 
because most of the times every time we carry our mobile phones so now it is always advisable not to share your things with someone else that is important so uh, your car keys your pen because uh, if you are working in a dental school dental college so don't share your uh, things with your friends your colleagues uh, don't share your pens don't share your uh, pencils don't share your mobile phones don't share your car keys if at all it needs to be it has to be sanitized before you reuse that is important and one arm i mean two arm one arm from on each side distance is very very important minimal one to three uh, meter distance is advisable and whenever you see a patient who is coughing who is sneezing who seems to be symptomatic who seems to be having some respiratory symptoms it's always better to keep at least a distance of six feet that is very very important and all of us our kids our patients all our friends or family we must know how to have a respiratory etiquettes as well as sneezing or cough etiquettes this is very very important because this virus spreads through droplet infections that that is confirmed now uh, the studies are confirmed so something about the this uh, covax I, I just wanted to share something about this uh, till now uh, the corona virus is not available there are clinical trials which are going on still not confirmed whether it is effective or no but this covax is not the name of the corona vaccine this is a name of the consortia this is the name of our organization kind of thing which who has made including many countries many countries who can financially support this program so the aim of this covax this organization is to have 2 billion doses at the end of 2021 their main aim is to include to vaccinate 20% of the population of the countries, not 100% of the population of the country, 20% of the population of the country has to be vaccinated. This is the goal which they have framed because uh, if they are able to uh, vaccinate the people who are high risk patients, high risk people like immunocompromised, old age patients, very young children, or uh, the patients, uh, the workers who are uh, healthcare workers who are in close vicinity in the treatment of uh, patients. So those has to be vaccinated first. That is the first goal of this COVAX. And another goal is like there are many countries who cannot financially support this program. So to give them a free vaccination uh, and especially the people who are residing in refugee camps because they cannot uh, financially support their vaccination program. So this is the main uh, goal of this uh, COVAX to provide free vaccination to people who are underprivileged, who are staying in refugee camps, that's what it. But till now, since there is no therapeutic strategy, there is no uh, treatment for coronavirus, so prevention is the only aim of all of us. So how we can prevent of uh, uh, this transmission or if we are not able to prevent the complete transmission, how we can reduce uh, transmission in the community should be our main objective now. And that is what is government doing. And what as a dentist, what, how, how we can help in transmission of uh, uh, this uh, prevention of transmission of this infection is we must access only the reliable information do not believe on whatsapp facebook or i will say the newspapers only believe the government agencies who are related with provi providing health services like you have icmr we have uh, who we have uh, ministry of health and family web websites these should be and uh, center for disease control all these has to be followed avoid panics avoid rumors and only take recommendations from your local body from your state body from your government public health officials 
do not believe anyone else and whenever you are advised to suspend your non urgent care we have to do it so if the government permits you you can start now in india uh, there are hot spots uh, are uh, there so accordingly accordingly the government is guiding us when to start the practice when to stop the practice and accordingly we have to follow those guidelines now why we need to stop elective procedures that is also important to know why we should not do all procedures freely because first of all as a dentist it becomes difficult for us to differentiate between uh, true positive patients because the patients who are asymptomatic the patients who are not having any symptoms it becomes difficult to find out whether this patient is having some problem or no because uh, we don't have those uh, test facility into our practice we cannot ask the patient to go with a uh, uh, ct scan of the chest right because that is what a medical person can recommend so it's always better uh, to stop elective procedures whenever your area is infected with covid patients but you have to uh, look at the government regulations government instructions for that and another thing is whenever you are doing a patient you need a personal protective equipment that is also very very important and uh, till now already it is in shortage shortage is still going on so it's better to utilize uh, the these pps for really sick patients and another important thing is in dentistry we have to do everything with your aerotes so most of the procedures are aerosol procedure even if you use your uh, three way syringe it also produces aerosol if you are doing a simple scaling it also produces aerosol so it becomes difficult to manage uh, a patient without production of aerosols and if the patient is infected you all will be prone to infection so that is the reason wherever uh, emergency is not there wherever uh, urgency is not there then it is better to avoid doing uh, or delaying the treatment till the time the things become normal so that is what we need to do and another problem in into our dental practice is we do not have airborne infection isolation rooms or a negative pressure rooms that is another problem and secondly we do not have a single patient room especially like in a dental college that in dental college in one department all 23 24 chairs will be in one room so we do not have a single patient rooms so there is always a chances of transmission of infection and secondly n95 mask normally are not stocked in dental uh, uh, dental uh, uh, clinics that is another problem and what kind of mask are needs to be uh, purchased that we will discuss in the coming slides these are the infection pro uh, control protocols infection prevention protocols which we need to follow i will discuss one by one all these protocols which we need how we need to follow so whenever uh, you need to do a patient first of all screening a patient is important previously the instructions were that you need to screen the patient for any international travel but in most of the countries this guideline has been abolished because everywhere the patients are there this statement was true when there were a folk uh, there are foci of infection in certain countries but now all countries since all countries are infected so it is not possible uh, to have some relation with the international travel because even in india now you can see lots of cases are there but many countries now don't go ahead with this guideline but in india uh, still we follow this guideline that if we have a international travel and then uh, you have to uh, delay or postpone your treatment that is one and you need to uh, go ahead with the sign and symptoms of infection that is also very very important always take temperature of the patient by using non contact thermometer this is very very important i think nothing new everywhere now it has become new normal now you go to any store any mall any theater any airport 
everything this is all taken care uh, because we have a aroga setu app that is also checked temperature is also taken and if there is a rise in temperature they don't allow you to board the aircraft and you must use a protective equipment personal protective equipment in the form of your uh, uh, goggles in the form of your n95 in the form of your uh, ppe uh, suit in the form of your uh, head cap all these and gloves of course according to the uh, the procedure which you are performing we will discuss uh, like how or, and what in where we need to use what use of rubber dam is very very important because if you are using rubber dam there will be hardly any infected aerosol hardly any infected aerosol that so rubber dam wherever it is possible you must use rubber dam along with high vacuum evacuation high speed evacuation is very very important high speed suction is very very important to use in all your aerosol generating procedures that is important autoclave autoclave your hand pieces that is also very very important and we all must have non retracting wall or into all your uh, hand pieces that is also important wherever your water line is you should have a non retractable wall because what happens uh, previously whatever uh, hand piece we use when you stop the hand piece it suck back little bit of fluid and sometimes it suck back uh, saliva also right so and it will infect whole of your tubing so now the guideline is before and after use of hand piece you must use for 20 seconds so that your water line is clear of anything which is even sucked back so 20 second before and 20 second after use of hand piece you must start the hand piece uh, so that the spray is uh, it comes out and all whatever the infection has gone inside it comes out that is very very important and we must clean and disinfect all public areas and four handed technique for controlling infection that is also very very important because if you are using a four handed technique once is you can uh, complete the procedure quickly and you uh, your assistant can do suction the assistant can disinfect the area all that things can be done so four handed technique for is very very important the patient, the uh, another thing which is important for you as a dentist as a professional uh, if you are will be going to a dental school like suppose you are a ug intern or a post graduate it is very very important like if we are having any underlying medical condition any underlying medical condition we should avoid doing practice we should avoid doing practice dentist who are above the age of 65 years and having any of these conditions which are mentioned like diabetes heart problem lung uh, uh, chronic lung disease any cancer patient is on immunocompromising drug therapy those should avoid practice and especially the aerosol generating procedures that is important and if we are suffering from any of the symptoms of respiratory infection like we are having cough uh, sore throat uh, is not the major uh, symptom in covid basically it is the dry cough it is the fever it is the dyspnea uh, all these are uh, the main symptoms of uh, covid and uh, the sore throat and git symptoms are uh, not found in all the cases but yes these are also found in the cases and even the rhinorrhea the running nose is not the major symptom of covid 19 like suppose a patient is we have a common cold before and then we get little bit of sore throat that doesn't mean we are having covid but still if we have these kind of symptoms we should not go to our practice we should stay back home and we should rather not even mix up with our family that is very very important and the patient these are the patient this is the kind of patient which should be not given the treatment like the patients who have traveled internationally the patients who have been hospitalized in the last 28 days because sometimes otherwise patient was not hospitalized for covid but because he he was admitted there maybe he got infection and the individual who comes from the hot spot area must be tested first and then they should get the treatment and all healthcare workers 
all healthcare workers, if they are dental patients and who are symptomatic, should not get the treatment. And the patients who have any symptom of respiratory depression or in respiratory infection or influenza should not be given the treatment or any history of direct con contact with COVID positive patient. If any patient gives you, then they should not be given the treatment. That is very, very important. Now, before you start any dental procedure, there are few things which are very, very important for all of you to know is you should not encourage the patient to come in groups. There has to be a point be appointment based practice walk-in patient should be avoided but if a patient comes walk-in without informing you then ask the patient to stay in their vehicle or outside till the time your operatory or waiting hall is clear is safe to receive those patients so if child if the child is there definitely the child will come with the guardian but if possible if the adult patient is your patient then ask the patient to come alone if possible but if a very old patient is there, very young patient is there, definitely they will be accompanied by a guardian, but then it should be only one. They should not come with both parents, only either mother or father. Mommy, he he hai. That is very, very he good. He then call the patient. Madhuri the uh, may I request Manisha Soni to ah. speak? May I request Manisha Soni to switch off the microphone, please? Yeah. Manisha, can you switch off the microphone? Thank you. You must call the patient uh, before uh, you call the patient to your operatory. Give a call to the patient and preferably a video call. Preferably a video call so that you can talk to the patient directly and know about their symptoms. And if they have any symptoms, if they have any positive history with contact with the those patients then do not recall the patient do not call the patients so like this you can go ahead with the pre video appointment uh, this uh, uh, in this uh, uh, this she is my friend from brazil she is doing uh, uh, she is basically a pediatric dentist and uh, whenever she uh, does this kind of uh, video call apart from knowing in detail about the patient related to the covid symptoms she give instructions she um, if the patient is only manageable on phone, like suppose uh, she come to know that this patient can be treated with medicine only, even it is it's best not to call that patient uh, into your practice, even it is recommended. Like you have taken, uh, uh, say, impression for Holly's appliance, you know, it's a removable appliance and you can even post this appliance to the patient and ask and guide the patient on video call that how to wear it. So it is always better to restrict the entry of the patients to restrict contact with the patient to minimum if it is possible. So on phone, you can advise the patient, you can advise the patient antibiotics, you can advise the patient's analgesic, and you can advise the patient to call you back after 48 hours to 72 hours if their symptoms do not resolve. And another thing is you need to be in touch with your local pharmacy person and you need to guide the patient like you visit this pharmacy and I'm giving instruction to this pharmacy to give you the medicine. Otherwise, some pharmacies during COVID, they do not dispense medicines to the patient on just uh, without prescription. And since you will be giving the instructions on phone or maybe on video call and you may not be giving the prescription, but if it is possible, you can even mail the prescription to the patient. So when patient arrive, ask the patient to wait outside. Uh, the patient should not be like normally uh, we fill the online form. I mean, the, the physical form about history and all that. It's always better to you fill the only the online form so that the contact with the patient is not there. That is important. And the, when the patient is sitting into your operatory, they should all wear at least a mask and ask them to wash or ha wash their hands with soap and water for 20 seconds that is important and if it's not available at least sanitizer and sanitizer should be taken a coin size uh, sanitizer on hand and it should be rubbed all surfaces of the hand till the time it is dry dryness should not be
Priyanka, can you switch off your microphone, please? Then, uh, uh, then uh, the the sanitizer which they have applied on hand that should not be uh, kept. Uh, I mean, let it dry with air only, but it should be rubbed till the time is to dry. This is important. Normally, what happens? We wet it and then we wait for uh, it to dry. But it should not be. It should be. Uh, rubbed till the time it becomes dry. That is the proper way of uh, that. And then you can give the shoe cover to the patient to wear. And uh, you can give uh, tissue papers also, so that if they have their cough or sneeze, they should use those tissue papers. And then the pedal uh, respect, uh, uh, receptacles uh, should be used, uh, like the dustbin, which, has, which, are, uh, which are operated by pedal. That should be kept into the waiting area and we should avoid unnecessary contact with the patient. And now it is also advisable not to encourage the medical representatives to visit, the friends to visit, the relatives to visit to uh, into your practice. It is always, should it should be avoided. So you can ask your uh, medical representative to give you a call and maybe by email they can send you the, whatever they Then, the detailed history uh, uh, of the patient is taken. Then there is a consent form recommended for, especially for the COVID, that has to be filled by the patient. And there has to be distancing of six feet. You should place your chairs uh, into your operatory, which are six feet away. And the chairs and the furniture should be cleanable, easily cleanable. So avoid keeping the furniture, which is of, of uh, I mean, uh, clothes, which is made of clothes, like sofas, right? So it's always, uh, preferably, it should be plastic, it should be metal, or, or it should be leather, which could, can be easily cleaned, which is, which can be, it, it can be easily di uh, disinfected. That is important. Now, if you look at this picture, you can see uh, child behavior management, in which a modeling is going on, and the, the dentist is... Uh, allowing the child to play with the instrument. But these kind of things are not possible now. Uh, these feels like dream because I'm a pediatric dentist. I cannot do these kind of treatments now because I don't want that my child uh, patient who is watching the treatment going on should get infection. So these are just a dream for me. We have a different alternatives uh, of behavior management technique, which we will discuss sometime later whenever Anmol will give me another chance to be with all of you. So in evaluation of patient, you have taken the history of contact, you have taken the history of travel, and whosoever uh, patient is even accompanying a child or, pay, or parents, suppose the parents are there and one son is coming, they should also wear the mask and you should take the temperature of them also. It is not that temperature reading of only patient is important. Temperature of every anyone who is entering into your operatory is important. That is very, very important. So if you find a suspect, uh, suspected case or confirmed case on taking a history, then you defer the treatment. Ask the patient not to get the treatment and isolate that patient and uh, whatever, wherever he was sitting, wherever he has moved, you have to clean, disinfect, and if possible, discard the surface supplies. That is it. At least six feet around that patient has to be kept clean. And before, now, after you have decided to go ahead with the treatment, important thing is you must ask the patient to rinse with hydrogen peroxide before beginning of any treatment either 0.2% iodine povidone solution or 1 to 1.5% hydrogen peroxide solution. That is very, very important. And try not to do the procedure which can induce scuff. That is important. We used to, uh, it, is, it was recommended that instead of taking intraoral radiographs, uh, CBCT, OPG, or extra oral radiograph should be taken because when you insert the radiograph into the mouth of the patient, of the mouth of the child or patient, they gag and they may produce aerosols. So it was recommended not to, but since you are well protected, you are already covered, you are well protected, even if you go ahead with uh, intra oral radiography, I think there should not be any problem. But the only thing is there has to be a reasoning for it. 
but yes if you can avoid nothing like that but otherwise if you are well protected if you are, your face is protected your eyes are protected your mouth is protected your nose is protected even then you can go ahead with uh, these intra oral uh, radiographs now are uh, sometimes we think what is an emergency what is a dental emergency dental emergency uh, there are guidelines about what makes a emergency in the dentistry that is uncontrolled bleeding wherever there is a cellulitis a infection which is compromising with the airway of the patient any trauma any uh, bone injury which is compromising patient's airway that is actually a true dental emergency but and then there are certain urgent dental care is also there one is emergency second is urgent dental care there are few examples uh, which are which comes under urgent dental care one is uh, severe dental pain then pericoronitis and then dry socket the tooth fracture dental trauma in which the tooth has come out the luxation has happened and then uh, uh, dental treatment like suppose the patient is having mobile tooth and uh, he has to go under ga and you know that if a mobile tooth is not uh, taken out and patient is put under ga then there are always chances of aspiration or uh, the patient the tooth can go inside so it's always better to remove that and if you feel that uh, the patient is not having a healing of the ulcer uh, which is since uh, uh, say 14 days and you need to uh, see that patient this is also one one of the urgent care uh, wherever biopsy is needed that's that's also urgent care and other than uh, urgent cares are like removal uh, suture removal then patients who are oncology patients who are on radiation and they had a denture and that denture is impinging and you want to repair that you want to grind that denture that is also important and whenever uh, old patient you have a given denture to the patient the patient is not able to bite uh, because this is causing ulceration that is also kind of urgent care and uh, these are few of the examples uh, the patient is having uh, was having a orthodontic treatment and the wire came out and which is impinging onto the cheek and or the lip the patient is not having uh, able to bite or eat so that is also uh, kind of uh, urgent care but there are non urgent uh, non emergency dental procedures like a routine examination like sometimes patient believe that i should go to a dentist after every 6 month so this is a routine examination do not call the patient for routine examination routine orthodontic treatment it is just a normal orthodontic treatment not a, not it's it is not a very emergency patient has some time uh, we we can postpone this kind of treatment the root stumps are there which are asymptomatic not causing any problem the uh, tooth which is badly decayed not causing any problem do not recall the patient for treatment and any aesthetic procedure that is also called kind of a non emergency uh, so in case of emergency always use rubber dam that is important high vacuum suction is important face shield is important goggles are important but goggles and face shield both are not required so you can use uh, face shield or goggles but i prefer face shield because goggles sometimes does not give you 100% protection so it's always better to use face shield and uh, if a patient has come to you uh, for uh, root canal treatment and if possible instead of opening the chamber with the uh, hand piece if we can use a chemo mechanical removal system and slowly you can remove the caries dentin and expose the pulp and after exposing the pulp you place a devitalizing paste and see so that uh, you don't need to uh, uh, remove i mean uh, remove the dentin uh, or uh, need to use um, a hand piece for access opening so it's always better to use non aerosol alternatives that is important and if at all you need to do aerosol generating procedure always schedule that patient in as a last patient in the day so that the all patients that you have treated with non uh, aerosol genetic procedure the last you do it and after that you make your clinic disinfected that's what is important and preferably uh, in a isolated and a vent well ventilated room it should be the treatment should be done because into our practice we don't have negative pressure rooms uh, so it's uh, uh, it's not available so at least 
it should be isolated room and well ventilated now it is recommended that you should not have a closed doors we should have a open doors but ac you can keep on no problem because sometimes it's difficult to stay indoor without ac but even when the ac is working you should not keep your doors closed that is important and uh, this is special recommendation in case of trauma if any trauma happens and you have given a suture it is or you have done an extraction preferably to give a absorbable suture so that patient doesn't need to come back for uh, getting the sutures removed as i have already discussed that minimal contact with the patient should be there and uh, if if you need to do irrigation you need to rinse the wound very very slowly so that you don't create a splatter and sometimes a patient comes with trauma and you have to do emergency treatment in that case uh, instead of waiting for rt pcr test report you go ahead with ct scan in ct scan if the changes there are typical changes in case of covid 19 so if you find these uh, tip, uh, typical changes in ct scan into the lungs of the patient then you have to manage the patient accordingly this is another thing and then the children uh, especially or the patients who are having uh, lung diseases, uh, uh, these, uh, the patients who are immunocompromised, the patients who are having uh, cardiac issues, the patients who are having renal failure, those patients should be avoided for the treatment. We should weigh the risk of benefit and the treatment. They, those patients should be avoided. So the, uh, sometimes you need uh, child patients to put under GA. Uh, not all the patients should be put under GA, not all the children should be hospitalized in this pandemic because we don't know uh, who is moving into your hospital setup and uh, who, he may be a positive patient and the child may have uh, infection from that particular patient. So they should be avoided to be hospitalized for GA. We can defer the treatment if possible. But yes, uh, if you cannot uh, postpone the treatment because of acute infection, because of severe pain, which cannot be managed uh, by doing, giving a treatment under LA. There is a cellulitis where treatment is not possible with LA or the patient is having uh, such a dental disease which is affecting their medical health and you need to go ahead the treatment with uh, GA, then definitely you need to go ahead with GA. But you have to weigh. That is also very, very important. And uh, whenever a trauma patient comes to you, uh, it's always better to use uh, bracket, ortho bracket and wire uh, to, to do the splinting. Because if you use composite and wire, what happens? You have to use a aerotor to remove that composite. But if you are using bracket and wire, you, without using even aerotor, you can debond uh, uh, the brackets from the tooth so that is the reason and it is always uh, recommended preferred treatment now first of all we should postpone the treatment but if at all patient needs uh, endodontic treatment so instead of endodontic treatment it's a better to do extraction and give a space maintainer so that you don't recall the patient again and again to and especially the child patient uh, this is a true st statement for primary teeth not for permanent teeth and, uh, and this is another condition where there is a lot of caries, uh, high caries is there, multiple decays are there. So schedule those patients in such a way that you finish the treatment in one sitting. You give IRM or glass enamel in all the lesions, you fill it temporarily and you put the patient for a follow up. And later on, when the things improve, you can recall the patient. So now we should try to do maximum treatment in one day. Maximum treatment, whatever the treatment you can do on that patient, do it. So that should be the policy now so that you don't recall the patient again and again. So if you want to do nitrous oxide, it is not a, a contraindication. You can do nitrous oxide sedation even in this COVID infection. But only thing is you should either use autoclavable or disposable nitrous tubings because ultimately all the gases exchanges are going to happen in the tubing. So it's always 
recommended to use either disposable preferably but otherwise if it is not available at least autoclavable nitrous oxide sedation tubings are very very important so you can schedule your appointments as wet appointments which are aerosol generating and dry appointments which are non aerosol generating so that uh, you can call all your patients who do not need hand use of hand piece at one time so that you have a minimal transmission of infection and another important thing is the air exchange and my recommendation for your operatory is you should have a fan uh, uh what do you call a standing fan or a wall fan on your back so that the air from you goes to the patient and whatever the aerosols are there those are pushed away and on the left side of, of the patient there has to be exhaust fan then you yourself then the patient and the exhaust or any good air filtration system that should be placed into your operator there are many procedures which are alternative to aerosol generating procedure uh, like uh, atraumatic restorative technique fissure sealants uh, silver diamine fluorides remineralizing agents chemogenic carriage removal systems halt thinking i cannot go into detail of each i'm sorry for that because it it, it itself is a one full lecture for each of the technique right Uh, so but yes there are these techniques available which we can use as a alternative to aerosol generating techniques then we have uh, details of uh, personal protective equipment like gloves then mask and the medical mask in gloves we have latex we have nitrile choice is yours but nitrile gloves are certainly better gloves because these are pow uh, powder free and then surgical mask uh, can surgical mask filter the coronavirus uh, actually the surgical mask is for the wearer suppose i am a dentist i am using a surgical mask i am having some influenza common cold some infection this will just confine my infection to myself these surgical mask are not to protect me from others these mask are to protect others from myself that is that is very very clear you must understand this so surgical mask whatever three layer mask we use does not protect us from others it just protect others from us suppose i am having infection my infection will not be transferred to the patient but here what we are want to avoid is infection to a dentist from the patient and that is only possible if we are using n95 or n100 face mask and uh, uh, n95 and n100 is the american designation and uh, uh, i'm i'm in american guidelines and ffp2 ffp3 is the european standards for these kind of mask uh, so three layer mask two layer mask and n95 you must understand uh, the difference between these all three a two layer doesn't give you much protection three layer gives you protection uh, give you means people are protected from infection what you have but if you wear n95 uh, or ffp2 at least then as a health professional you are protected from the patient so the most common respirator is n95 we use uh, uh, you must have seen people are using with valve but actually valve uh, is just to make the breathing easy it has no role in filtration so it is just a opening which has a flap when you exhale it opens and air is thrown out so it doesn't give you protection as far as filtration is concerned so if you if we are a dentist and if we have to use into our practice we must use n95 which is without valve so make sure that you buy a n95 which is without valve not with valve uh if if sometimes uh, we have a question that which is better ffp2 or ffp3 n95 or n100 actually ffp2 is almost equal to n95 only thing is filtration 
guideline uh, uh, conditions are better in case of N95. So I can say if a company is manufacturing N95, that will be little superior to the company which is manufacturing NFFP2, but not very, very significantly different. So three important things are very, very effective for any respiratory uh, mask to be respirator to be effective. It should be correctly worn and removed out. That is important. You should know what is the correct way of putting in and what is the correct way of removing it. And then it should snugly fit it. Uh, sometimes we complain that when I wear my eyeglasses, my eyeglasses get foggy when I wear N95. That means you are not wearing N95 properly because if you wear N95 properly, there will not be any fogging around it. That is for sure. And your respirator filter must capture 95. That is the guideline for N95. And then we must use respirator for longer time of use. That is also important. That you don't need to discard your respirator so frequently you can use the respirators for a long time. One is it's expensive. Second is the availability is a problem. And how we use it, I'll just uh, uh, detail you like how we can use these uh, respirators for a longer time. Uh, for better use, for better protection of N95, whenever you are using a handpiece over your N95, wear a surgical mask. Because surgical mask or three layer mask is not very, very expensive. So if you wear a surgical mask over your N95, and even if the splatter is there, it will be protected. Your N95 mask will be saved. And after every patient, you can remove your surgical mask. You can change your surgical mask and keep wearing your N95 till the time it is visibly soiled. Because uh, how we use it, I'll just uh, tell you. And then we must, use a cleanable face shield that is also very very important now this is the guideline how we can have extended use of n95 this is the guideline uh, you should have five to six n95 for yourself you mark it as monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday if you have a sunday so better you take seven but otherwise the inventor of this mask which is dr peter he recommended that if you keep this respirator dry for three to four days, the coronavirus cannot survive on this mask. So even after four days, you can rotate the mask, but it becomes difficult to mark. So uh, what I do is I mark my mask as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And I use one uh, mask for each day and rotation will be after seven days. So when the next, uh, Term, I mean, comes till that time, my mask is already environmentally disinfected, environmentally sterilized. So I don't need to use any chemical, anything. It will be, uh, by default, it will be sterilized. And never ever wash your mask. Never ever disinfect your mask by using alcohol or something. It is not at all recommended. Now, important thing is three-layered mask, surgical mask for all patients and visitors, three-layered mask for all your front desk staff, N95 for the dentist and chair side assistant, and N95 mask for your clinic staff. These are the recommendations. We all must follow these recommendations. Because for cleaning staff, since the floor is infected, when they broom, when they clean, there will be a splatter. So we have to safeguard our cleaning staff. So that is why it is recommended for them also. But since your front desk staff is not coming in direct contact with patient, so it's better to give a three-layer mask because you know that N95 mask is not that easily available, right? So uh, wearing mask uh, when not indicated definitely result in unnecessarily cost and it is a burden. Uh, procurement burden uh, especially during this period you know uh, the gloves which used to cost 200 rupees per box is costing 650 rupees now right and these n95 mask uh, was otherwise costing us only 26 rupees in the before pandemic 
but it was available in 350 rupees and now again it has come down maybe to 100 rupees but if uh, a possible uh, unnecessary use of uh, a respirator as n95 should not be done but wherever we are needing it it should not be ignored so judicious use of these has to be done so this is one procedure uh, one uh, uh, many hospitals are using this procedure for sterilization of their n95 mask so you can see in the picture there is a paper bag so uh, after uv sterilization of n95 mask they are sent to the healthcare worker so there is two bags if you can see there is a brown bag also so this brown bag is for resending back for sterilization so after use they pack the mask into this brown paper bag and send it for sterilization after sterilization is sent back and all these masks are marked with their identity number so that there is no problem they and then we have uh, these kind of face shields one has a side protection other doesn't have so always use goggles if you don't prefer using a face shield the goggles which have a side protection so that there is no gap between the goggles and your face and if there is a gap these are not at all effective and these are the face shields uh, this is bhagyashri she has uh, designed beautiful uh, face shields with different cartoon characters so but these face shields should always be worn whenever you are close to proximity of the patient irrespective whether you use aerosol generating procedure or a non aerosol generating procedure you should use uh, a good quality face shield because see this coronavirus can enter into your body uh, from nose mouth and or eyes right now how eyes because we know that there is a necro necro uh, uh, there is uh, uh, lacrimal duct, duct which goes from eyes to your uh, nose area so if you touch your eyes and uh, if the virus gets into the eye it can go to your uh, nasal area and from nasal area it will go to your respiratory area because this virus has affinity for your respiratory mucosa so face protection is very very important and that is only possible if you use a good quality mask and as well as you keep your face protected with the help of a face shield and you don't touch your face at all not regularly even you don't touch your face so there are variety of gowns available i think you all know well uh, different gowns are available reusable gowns are the sterilizable gowns are also there and disposable gowns are also available so wherever uh, you have a, a patient who is so, uh, supposed to be a covid positive patient or suspected patient always use disposable ones but otherwise you can use uh, even the auto clippable ones and uh, these are the chemicals for disinfection for all of you which is important for uh, to know is the water line disinfection is very very important normally we uh, we don't mix anything in the water bottle which we have onto the dental chair but uh, there is a biofilm formation into all the water lines that is the fact that is evidence based and those water lines uh, water line are the sources of bacterial infection to the patient so always mix 1 ml of 5% sodium hypochlorite solution all of your practice have hypochlorite solution in different concentrations so but this is the guideline that 1 ml of 5% hypochlorite to be mixed with 5 liter of water and that water should be used for air rotor and your air switch that is important and then uh for the surface which are uh, uh non metallic the surface which are non metallic we can use hypochlorite 1% or 0.5% uh, hydrogen peroxide and the surface which are metallic we need to have 70% alcohol and there are many things available in the market you can prepare your own 1% sodium hypochlorite solution we have a liquid bleach we have a liquid which is 5% we have a sodium dichloro cyanurate powder is available then we have chloramine powder we have a bleaching powder i have given you 
the guideline how we can mix these things and make 1% of sodium hypochlorite solution. You can just take a screenshot of this so that you can make your own and it is very, it is very, very economical. Then we have uh, these kind of gadgets available in our market. These are, uh, uh, there are different kind of uh, evidences for it. Few are in favor, few are not in favor. Now it depends upon which product you are using, how effective it is. But yes, otherwise ultraviolet light is effective, but you have to be very, very careful when you use ultraviolet light into your practice because you cannot use it for, for all kinds of things. Then we have air, purify, air purifiers. Important thing in air, air purifier is you must use a HEPA filter, which is of 13 or 14 grains. If it is less than that, it is not at all effective. Uh, this one uh, air purifier, which I'm using is by Dyson. So this is a effective as far as company claims. And I think I have also experienced this is a good HEPA filter. So what I have done is I have placed on the left side of the patient. So on my right side, there is a pedestal fan, the standing fan. And on my left side of the patient is the HEPA filter. So the airflow is from dentist to the patient and to the HEPA filter. This is how we do. And this is a picture of uh, the negative pressure room. Uh, you can, uh, it's not possible in a normal setup to make it, but yes, uh, the companies are there. You can search on Google who's make uh, these rooms uh, into the hospital setup. If you have nothing like that, but uh, otherwise uh, we can take precautions and do the treatment. And this is an air suction arm uh, where uh, it is placed near to the patient's mouth, whatever the aerosols are generated, these are sucked by the suction arm. And then after filtration, the clean air is thrown out. And this is another uh, physical barrier, which are the plastic sneeze guards. So these kind of sneeze guards you can place on your, uh, on your front desk area so that your front desk staff doesn't come in contact with the patient directly. And that's the reason you can give them the only the three uh, layered surgical mask and but if they have a closer proximity then you have to give them also n95 mask but these are the good things you, you all have seen everywhere these sneeze guards are now uh, new normals these are placed everywhere so if you are sick do not come to your operatory make a policy whosoever is sick into your yourself your staff don't allow them or you don't go to the operatory that is has to be very, very uh, judiciously followed. Guide your parents, uh, guide your uh, staff member uh, not to use others' uh, tools and equipment. I have discussed that uh, already discussed with you. They should not use these tools and equipment like phones and pens and all that staplers with others. They should have their own set of the things, right? And uh, they should know how to use uh, uh, these BP kits. So, Few guidelines, dental procedure on asymptomatic patient, non-involving aerosol generating procedure, we can uh, use uh, this uh, three lead mask. But if you are using a face shield, if you are not using a face shield, you have to use uh, N95 and then definitely PP kit and the gloves. That is important. And then in a aerosol generating procedures, no choice, you have to use N95. And the patients who are confirmed or suspected whether you use uh, do aerosol or non aerosol you have to use n95 along with your face shield mask and your uh, uh, overall or coverall or the gown important now important thing is uh, uh, you must take universal precautions from your waiting area remove all things which are unnecessary no newspaper no twice no reading material here material, no mementos, no prize, whatever we get from conference, nothing should be placed. Place things which can be easily clean, cleaned, which can be easily uh, uh, disinfected. Clean all areas, common areas, including washroom or door handles, the railings, uh, the uh, toilet handles everywhere. It should be cleaned very, very regularly. Don't let the patient walk in directly, guide the patient to walk outside or into their car till you are ready to see them Sanit ask them to sanitize their hands wear the mask and take the temperature symptoms history of travel and avoid unnecessary visits 
ask them not to come with so many people you you should have an excellent telephonic triage into your operatory to handle those patients telephonically that is important and then if the patient is uh, if your staff members or yourself are not well go for leave <coughs> use rubber dam high speed suction oral rinse this is very very important and clean disinfect the areas within 6 feet whenever you find a patient who is a covid positive right so history if patient tells you that this could be a positive patient always defer the treatment take the patient in isolation and clean the area that is important as a normal person what we need to remember avoid unnecessary touching the people avoid going into crowd unnecessary travel should be avoided do not touch the lift buttons the public buttons or even the railings like suppose you are uh, going up the stairs do not touch anything keep something like a pen or something to push the buttons that is important and whenever you are in public keep your face and eyes well protected that is important do not believe the few fake news do not believe your social media try to stick to the trustworthy sources and do not check the updates very very frequently because unnecessary it is query when you cannot do anything like suppose there is a pandemic in certain area there are a lot of cases in certain area you cannot do anything are you cannot you cannot do anything so then why unnecessarily worry about it try not to watch the news every day maybe once upon a time you can read the news do not uh, uh, watch the news every day and if you share something on the social media about covid watch read it first and then you share it first of all try not to share anything unnecessary it is a rumor so don't uh, share anything about the covid or something but if at all you share just watch it read it first then only you share it because this anxiety this corona is causing lot of anxiety especially into our professional because uh, and especially into our students because uh, the students and especially the post graduate who have taken admission now they are not able to attend their dental school properly the patients are not uh, available there they are not they are not uh, getting good uh, uh, clinical knowledge although the online classes are going on everywhere but uh, in our dentistry practical knowledge is important so there is a fear of uncertainty certainly and as a practitioner we are not doing the patients the way we used to do so there is a fear of uh, financial loss also but nothing to worry uh, medical and especially this dental profession is such a profession which has been least affected with any kind of recession so nothing to worry we are going to come up and this is just a transient phase uh this is a uh, this is a picture which i just saw on uh, uh, google when i was go- uh, doing some google on some research like suppose uh, tomorrow you get a news to- tomorrow on your tv screen that there is a x disease which is a airborne which is contagious which is very very deadly and there are new cases of 20 lakh uh, cases uh, every year and roughly 4.35 lakh deaths will happen and uh, see 50 deaths every year will it be very scary for you yes it will be very scary because it's more deadlier than uh, corona but believe me this disease is already existing into our country that is tuberculosis this data is for tuberculosis so already things are there but since it is a pandemic this is a new infection and uh, still uh why uh, this vaccine has not come up i think prevention is the only uh, uh thing which we can do so if you are very anxious when you are worried uh just focus on the things which you can control don't focus on the things which you cannot control i have already told you that uh, if there is a lot of cases in one area can you do something no you cannot do anything so then why to worry about that thing but yes you must plan for what you can do 
that is important and for yourself it is important your health should be uh, good you should have a very good sleep because whenever you have a good sleep you eat healthy you do good exercises your immunity improves and now what we need is good immunity so our life are not over our sunset sun is not set uh, every day whatever we have not done because i remember when there was a complete lockdown uh, many a times me my son and my daughter used to go on the uh, rooftop and we used to watch the uh, moon and we used to watch sunset so i think that was really beautiful which i had never done in uh, 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 previous 40 years i think i did many things now our love is not over our relations are not lost we can talk to we have the time now to talk to our friends our families wherever we have not uh, uh, talk we should talk now and uh, learning is not stopped i remember i have never attended so many lectures in my life which i did in these four or five months i have never lectured so many much which i did in these four and five months i think the learning is a lot now you can enjoy your music whatever uh, songs you have not heard uh, heard before because of your uh, uh, busyness i think you can do that no one is going cannot stop you from imagining the things you can no one can stop you uh, from your creativity like i have learned many things uh, uh, in cooking because uh, i had a lot of time so i used to cook uh, so many things and my kids used to love that dad has cooked something for us your kindness is no, not over and whenever you find something who is positive some someone who is infected always try to help them and uh, that is very important and hope is certainly not over we are going to come up with this uh, just immerse yourself in the beauty of life and you must hug the beauty of life that is important so you have to be very very strong because we all know that these rains never never remain forever the storm doesn't remain every day so together we can never stop do your best today you are someone's hope and one day someone's hero so if you have any question i am available on facebook on insta on phone uh, this whatsapp and uh, this is my email id if you have any question you are most welcome any time to be in touch with me uh, share anything any share, ask me any uh, question i would love to answer all your queries so stay informed well informed stay healthy stay safe and enjoy your family that is important uh yes anmol uh, do we have any question let me see uh hello anmol are you there uh, yes sir uh, priyanka uh, take up the questions please yes ma'am good evening sir thank you good for evening priyanka good evening thank you sir uh, for giving me such a nice lecture which you related to covid 19 and we only this uh, because we uh, we are going to talk Practice, uh, our uh, I would like to... Prenka, I cannot hear you properly. Maybe this problem is with me or uh, uh, Anmol, is it with you also? Uh, no, uh, it's with uh, all of us. Um... Uh, what to do then? Should I? Should I? Uh, Anu, ma'am, uh, you can start. Uh, uh, sir, that was an amazing session. Thank you so much for enlightening us. and it was okay. very well elaborated i think the entire fraternity will be like very uh, well uh, it will be a very great help for the entire fraternity with this session we have lot of questions with yeah. us sir uh, shoe wanted to ask you that for the diagnosis of covid 19 can we do it through the chest x ray of the patient Oh no, not the chest x ray actually chest x ray may not give you the right finding although it will tell you about the changes which has happened uh, but otherwise only ct scan of chest is important because ct scan 
if you go ahead to the ct scan there is a typical picture of a covid patients as far as the ct image is concerned and even if you don't go, go ahead with the rt pcr test uh, only with the help of PC, uh, ct scan test you can come to know this patient is having covid positive or not thank you sir sir aisha uh, is asking regarding the vertical transmission of covid like if the uh, is there is a possibility or is there any literature regarding if uh, uh, mother is negative but the child is found to be positive uh, yes i have come across uh, uh, two patients as far as the literature is concerned in which the mother was infected but she was giving feed every day to the child but child was not infant was not having any problem but in other the mother was absolutely negative but infant was positive but that uh, that patient was uh, born in a hospital setup right so it was possible that that because since that infant was in the care of uh, the caretakers like the uh, healthcare workers so maybe he got infection from them but yes yes uh, there are uh, diff two cases which i have read in literature one i personally know uh, about the first example i gave you the second one was there in literature yes definitely so initially there was a lot of debate and discussion going on uh, very uh, on various platforms regarding prophylactic medication for the healthcare workers mm -hmm. so uh, so and even we are back to our practice but we have not taken any medication so yeah. what what are your uh, take on this okay actually as per recommendations of icmr yes sir the medicine was uh, hydroxychloroquine was recommended and it is still recommended they have not denied the use of scq for the health workers as prophylaxis but many of the countries and have uh, are not uh, promoting or not recommending scq to be used because it has own side effects but now what many countries are recommending are the vaccine against flu they are recommending that we should give a vaccine against flu to all healthcare workers and it has been found that if they are vaccinated with the flu vaccine then they don't get a uh, very severe symptoms that is what is recommended but i was checking with the indian guidelines i could not find maybe i missed it but i know these guidelines are by cdc uh, us so there is another question by said uh, pneumothorax is shown by many smokers who wear n95 mask in that condition should uh, should they continue wearing n95 or like if the the person is a smoker and is developing other complications so see n95 mask wearing is recommended only in a limited segment of people that is whenever we are in contact with a suspected or a infected covid positive patient whenever we are a healthcare worker who are in close proximity to those patients all healthcare workers are not even recommended to wear n95 mask right even like i have gave you example that even our front desk people although they are into the same room into the front desk area in the waiting hall area but since they are not in close proximity to the patient they are not supposed to wear it they can just wear a surgical mask and the things are fine but the dentist and the chair side assistant sit because they are in very very close proximity so that that's why they need to so any person who is a smoker unnecessarily why he should wear a n95 mask when he is not in prone to into close proximity with the people yes so there is another question by jebun uh, uh, the person is asking what are the merits and demerits of mask with valve oh yes i think uh, you are talking about dr jebun nesa yes sir uh, yes, she sir. is uh, from uh, bangladesh and uh, she is the president of pediatric association pediatric dental association 
and uh, uh, it's a very valid question uh, actually uh, uh, what, what exactly what else you want to know is it a, this message only or something more it's just this question what are the merits and demerits of mass with valve no problem actually i have already detailed in my lecture about the valve because these are for these are the basically a particle filtration mask which are for industry not for healthcare system the mask with the valve are used in the industry where is a dust where are certain chemicals but wherever infection is these valve uh, this mask with valve should not be used because these are just to facilitate breathing because when you exhale these walls open there is a hole actually right so there is just a flap which uh, which is opening and which is closing with your inhaling and exhaling so this is just for facilitation of your breathing but it it is it doesn't help you in prevention of infection so we should not use mask n95 mask with valve if we are into healthcare system uh sir i would like anmol uh, to conclude and uh, talk to you sir i would like to thank you for giving us your valuable time this evening so it was an amazingly informative lecture i would rather say it was a positive lecture in this need of an hour in this pandemic we are uh, living with this pandemic and we are back with our practices and this information and the safety precautions you have shared today with all the practitioners present here is really will help them in their practices practicing uh, safely i could say much more safer and they can deliver much more safer treatment also to the patients so uh, it's very positive and safe we can say lecture for all the practitioners and we have learned many more things today and i would uh, thank uh, dr anu and priyanka for hosting this session and also my team sino dent for making this event possible and sir again thanks to you for thank joining you. us thank you sir the, all you all take care of you well and stay safe and uh, just let me know if i could do anything for you guys it was wonderful thank you lot sir thank you so much thank you please take care of you well thank you sir bye good night good night all bye. friends bye, thank you so much for attending my webinar thank you thank you bye bye thank you sir